Today, I'm going to answer a question that I get from my students a lot. And that's, of course, if it's my sister and me or my sister and I. So think about this. Think is number one correct? Number two correct? Or are they both correct? Put your answer in the comments and then I'll explain the answer and the reason why. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new video. Now, let's dive in with today's lesson. about sentence structure here and is it my sister and me my sister and I or both are correct now this is a question I get from my students a lot but these two examples were submitted by one of my students mark so mark wanted to know is it my sister and me live in Paris or my sister and I live in Paris or are both of these examples correct? So first of all, put your answer in the comments if you haven't already. So put number one, number two, or you can put one and two if you think they're both correct. So did you put them in the comments? Now, this is also something that probably confuses you because you probably hear native English speakers use both of them, okay? I certainly hear native English speakers use both of these, and I've probably done it myself a few times as well, but they're not both correct, okay? So if you put one and two, sorry, not correct. So is it number one or is it number two? Well, number one, my sister and me live in Paris. What do you think? Eh, this is incorrect, okay? Grammatically, this doesn't work. My sister and I live in Paris. Ah, that sounds better. This is grammatically correct. So here, notice, our example is with my sister. It doesn't have to be. It can be any subject, okay? My friend and I, my friend, her brother and I. So it can be, you know, maybe a couple different people and then and I, okay? So notice when we have that structure. So subject and I. That's the only correct structure. So we're talking about English sentence structure. It's not possible to use and me. Now, there is a really easy way to understand why, okay? So this is such an easy way that this will really help you the next time you're forming a sentence in English. And even if you forget, this explanation, just remember this one thing, and then you'll be like, duh, obviously it's correct, okay? So that one thing is, take away the subject and, okay? So if we take it away, this sentence, we're left with me live in Paris. Me live in Paris. Well, obviously that's not correct. I'm sure you know, you don't say me live, me work, me want, no. That's not correct. But here, we take away my sister and, and I'm left with, I live in Paris. Well, that's correct. I live in Paris. I work in Toronto. I need something. I want something. We know that's how you begin a sentence, right? You begin it with I. So me is not a subject, okay? Now, because of that, we don't use it. And I think now it's really easy for you to see that this does not sound good, right? 
So when you say it like this, you might be like, well, what's the big deal? All I'm doing is using me instead of I, okay? But the deal is that this sounds terrible if we take away my sister Anne and we're left with me, me live in Paris. That does not sound good. So even when you include the subject, another subject before, to a native English speaker, you know, it doesn't sound very good. Although I also just said that native English speakers make this mistake a lot, which is true. <laughs> so of course, even if you hear a native English speaker do it, it doesn't mean that you should do it as well because native English speakers, we don't always use correct grammar, okay? And this is just one of those areas where we sometimes make a mistake. Bottom line, subject and I. So I is the subject, me is not a subject. So Mark, I hope that answered your question. It's a pretty easy answer and I get this question a lot. So this is for everybody who's wondering and also wondering why. Why is it? So there you go. Now you know. No more wondering. So now try an example. Remember, you got to take your new knowledge and then use it. Use it instantly because that's the key for your brain to take that information and permanently remember it, okay? So just do a simple sentence like this with one subject, so he or she, and I, okay? But then try one with that combined subject. So maybe my sister, my brother, and I, or my colleague, George, John, and I, you know, try some um, longer structure as well. So put two of those examples in the comments and use different verbs as well. And here, just to point out, this verb doesn't have to be in the present simple. So it doesn't matter what the verb tenses it is. It could be lived, okay? So we can change the verb tense, we can change the verb, but this part of the sentence still is going to be subject and I, all right? So there you go, Mark, and everyone else who was wondering what the correct answer is. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And also, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, leave them in the comments and I'll answer them during my next video. Before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. Now, in this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, way to go. Look at you, improving your English sentence structure. That's awesome. Don't stop there. Check out this video. And don't forget about this video. And make sure you subscribe. And until next time, bye.